we're going to look at how to graph transformations, specifically quadratic functions, um, and how they might be transformed. Um, I've started with the y equals x squared graph, which is drawn here in blue. Uh, and it has some specific points on it that we're going to be focusing on. Um, it has a point here at 1, 1. It has a point here at 2, 4 and at 3, 9. And these points um, create this quadratic parabola and these are the points that we're going to be focused on transforming or moving across our grid based on whatever this new equation is. Um, so I have a new equation here. I've written it in vertex form and it tells me a number of different things that are happening to my graph. Uh, the first one is it tells me that it has a compress which is getting at that I'm going to take all of these y values and I'm going to sh compress them. They're going to vertically move down okay, by this factor, by this factor of one half and we'll see what they turn into in a moment. The other thing that this equation tells me is that I have a reflection and that's that negative sign and the reflection here is in the x-axis meaning that this parabola is actually going to be flipped upside down. The last transformation that's happening is this plus 4 and this implies that there is a shift of 4 units and that shift is to the left. It's always the opposite of whatever you intuitively think here in the equation. The reason for that is that the original equation for a quadratic or for the original function for a vertex form of a quadratic is x minus h, meaning that whatever shift it is that we want to have, for instance, four units left, that value would be a negative four and when I take that value of negative 4 and I put it into this original form of my vertex equation, the two negatives end up making a positive. So in my equation here it looks like it's a plus 4. Intuitively you might think that that is a shift to the right 4 units, but it's actually to the left. So we're going to work our way through transforming this graph. The first thing that I'm going to do is the compress factor. I can do the reflection or the compress first, it doesn't really matter, I just pick and choose the compress. Every y value I will need to multiply by one half. So this y value right here at this point under my cursor is one. So if I multiply it by a half, I get a half. So I'm going to put a dot right there. And whatever I put on one side, I have to put on the mirror on the other. This y value under my cursor is four. So if I multiply it by a half, I get 2. So I'm putting a dot here at 2 and then I put the mirror point the other side. This y value is 9. So I multiply it by 1 half and I get 4 and a half. So that means that point moves all the way down here to 4 and a half. And I've created a series of points now that I can connect and create my new parabola that's been compressed by a value of one half. The second thing that I have to do is that reflection, which means, oh, I have to talk faster. Uh, the reflection is in the x-axis. So every point that's above the x-axis is now has to be below the x-axis. So if I have a point here where y is one half, that means my point now moves down to y is negative one-half and I put the mirror point on the other side. This y value is at two, the, the reflection is now down at negative two and I put the mirror point. This value is at four and a half, I put the reflection down here at negative four and a half and again the mirror point. So I've taken that compressed parabola and I've reflected it and turned it upside down in the x-axis. The last part of my transformations is dealing with this shift four units left. That means that every value in my parabola that I have compressed and 
reflected now has to go four units to the left and I just work my way through the parabola. I like to start at the vertex, it's just my preference and then I know where to put my mirror points. So I take the vertex and I go one, two, three, four units to the left. I take this point, it's at the, the half, negative one half, I do one, two, three, four units to the left and it needs a mirror point. Take this guy, one, two, three, four units to the left and it needs its mirror point. And the last one, one, two, three, four units to the left and it needs its mirror point. And I've created now my final version of the parabola. And if I go ahead and graph that with my uh, graphing software here, I get a parabola that sits pretty much underneath of where I graphed it. That's graphing quadratics with transformations. I'm going to do a second example for a second video in this